Here we go. Regeneration. That's the name of the game. Um, a lot of people have been concerned about the fact that we're spending one and a half million pounds regenerating Christchurch. Um, why do we have to do it? David, it is a lot of money. Um, the whole of the Regen team and the ECC understand it's a lot of money. But we have to confront the reality that we have buildings here which are no longer fit for purpose. The church itself is the biggest auditorium uh, open space that we have in Cleveland so far as we know. The rooms themselves that we have were built over a period of a hundred years at different times. There are different levels. We have stairs that we have to climb to go from one room to another room. A kitchen in between which is downstairs from some rooms, upstairs from other rooms. We have facilities which we can't reach without going from one room through to another room. If you want to go to the toilets from the church, you have to go outside or through the vestry. And to get there, you have to go across the sanctuary. Uh, we have a set of facilities which are first class in terms of opportunity, but third class in terms of capability and uh, fitness for purpose. Uh, the space we have just won't equip us to complete our mission over the next 50 years or so in any shape or form of effective fashion. Yeah. So what you're saying in effect is that the, the building as it is at the moment is not user friendly. It's, the buildings are not user friendly and they're not fit for purpose. We've looked at whether we could adapt uh, the, the hall complex and we've concluded that that would not be practical. In fact, it would cost more money to do that effectively than to demolish them and start again and build a new array of halls um, so that uh, yeah. all are on one level and uh, accessible through the new lobby into and, and with the church itself. Yeah. Well, it's good to know that because some people have been um, concerned that, that, that we, we could uh, adapt what we've already got. But what you're saying is that it would cost more to do that. It would cost more to do that. It would be uh, a, an, an alteration of compromises. And, and frankly, we wouldn't get the uh, most effective finished job that we uh, all look forward to. Good. Well, that's, that is good to know. Of course, lots of us are really interested in what the new facilities will look like. And later on in the film, uh, we shall have a computer-generated uh, film which will show us uh, the new hall complex and the new church in its reconfigured form. Of course that is a computer generated uh, film and the plans in front of me here describe in a little more detail exactly how things will change. I'll highlight some key features and then we're going to show you some of the problems that we've had to overcome or some of the changes that we shall be making to uh, ensure that what we offer in future is going to be fit for purpose and solve the challenges that we have with the existing facilities. So we'll have a church which will have the pews removed and replaced by individual seats that will be stackable and movable and they'll be stored in a room here at the back so that Monday to Friday we can use the church for toddler groups, for drama, for music, for a range of facilities. And any one of us can imagine what use we could put this wonderful space to during the times at the moment when it is just lying dormant. We'll have new entrances from a new lobby constructed as part of the hall complex. To put the new entrances in place, we have to remove the organ boxes. And the organ console will be replaced by a mobile electric digital organ, which can be positioned anywhere in the church itself. The gallery remains, but under it we remove the crash and we put in a new meeting room with openable doors so that this area can be incorporated into the church when we have particularly busy services. The technical desk will be moved to the gallery from which it will have 
a good view of all the proceedings and can become the command centre for the new lighting system and for the new technology, vision and sound that we shall be installing. The sanctuary will be reduced in size to enable the new access ways to be provided, but will become a flat area with just uh, two steps at this point, kneeling and healing positions near the Reredos at the eastern end of the church itself. The rest of the sanctuary will be a flat space where we currently have a range of different steps. We'll show you those later on. All this area here is going to be ground level. This area is going to have uh, two steps up. This table is going. The communion rail is going to be moved back, so there's just enough space to get through. But even this is going to be lower. Yes, the it, we do regard it as most important that we have uh, a high sanctuary area. Mm -hmm. But we will have a new holy table. Yeah. And so we'll have neither of these two, but a, a new one um, uh, that we shall have uh, uh, very flexible and movable as, as, as we have at the moment. But by removing this table here, we have the opportunity uh, and uh, an important opportunity to bring back the rail that we have at the moment to a position around about where I'm standing. And that means that the whole of the area from here right through to um, the, the front of the sanctuary will be on a single level and that will be just two steps higher than the, uh, the main auditorium. Good, which that's, itself that's... will be a, 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 a level area below that. David, let's just picture for a moment a situation where someone is in the church here and needs to get to the toilets. Okay. Frequent occurrence, we know it happens, we all need to do this thing from time to time and we have lots of young people hmm. uh, and children uh, who have needs uh, as much as yeah. the rest of us. Well, there are two so, options, aren't there? There are two options. One is to go out through the north door. Yes. And, and if it's dipping down with rain, that's not, a, not, not, not very yeah. wise. And if you're lucky, the door into the hall is not locked. Absolutely. If it's you're unlucky, it is locked. Or the other, the, the, other, the only other way is to go through the vestry and you're then confronted with steps. And let's just see what that looks like for okay, those who might need reminding. Let's go and have a look. Now, you might need to just remember that there could well be a service taking place at the moment. Which is, which is a <laughs> major consideration. I'm preaching from here, and uh, David, you're trying to get to the loop. Absolutely. door and I don't want you coming through my, <laughs> oh, my meeting and, 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 and it, it might be the uh, well, child contact centre and you're not allowed to come in there. Case, we've got a problem. Come on, well, we have got a problem. We have got a problem. We have. Okay, well the only way is to run up through here. But it's raining. Tough. It's blowing a gale. Tough. We've got it. And then I'm going to get the drinks back. How am I going to do that? With difficulty. With difficulty. With difficulty. Yes, but exactly. But this, this is the problem. It is the problem. We'll have to go all the way around. And, and there you go. 
So that's but it a bit of a story of uh, the Regen project as we have it at the moment. But what's much more exciting is how it will really look when it's finished. And our architects, Chedburn Dudley, have put together this computer film that we can now see that takes us through the church and the rooms in their new and exciting 